Hi guys and welcome to episode 111. This is officially the first Let's Play video with three consecutive numbers in its count number. Which is, uh, I don't know if I'll actually reach the second time, but it, it, I suppose it's pretty cool. Last time I asked, um, like, about the transfer track, and I will do that some other time. By the way, I am really glad about all the feedback, and this is really something that I want to get out there. That feedback is something which I don't mind. Just, if you think my thing sucks, just tell me my thing sucks, and tell me why my thing sucks, and what you would suggest I would do, because... To be very honest, there are a couple of points. Not only am I pretty unexperienced, do I not have too much knowledge about theme parks in general, so that there are a couple of areas where I can definitely still improve and don't know really too much about them. I also have to say that the reason why I started sharing my things in general is just to get better and... It's to be very honest also what I really like about the Rollercoaster Second 3 community, the fact that everybody watches and responds to each other's, stuff's, uh, each other's stuff and helps each other out and that's also what I do still like about presenting my own projects. So if you ever have any um, feedback, criticism to give me then go ahead. If you think there is something really terribly wrong with my stuff and you have a good explanation why then I'm always open for that. So. Thank you about all that, by the way, but I am going to have to do that some other time because I already had this episode pre-recorded. I was actually thinking that I might turn this into two episodes, but I don't really have anything else, so this is just going to be a longer episode for once, so enjoy that, I suppose. The only thing that will really be going on in this episode is this queue line and some foliage. Uh, something which I have to say about this queue line is that it's something that I've really procrastinated, and queue lines in general are really something that I don't know too much about. It's kind of similar to the transfer track in that respect since... Well, the transfer track I didn't really know anything about really how I would do it. And I will get a extra building or at least an extra part of the track in so that I can store the cars on a different part of the track. So I will, that in the, I will do that in the future, but the queue is something which I also don't know too much about. I did a tiny bit of internet research, sort of, and found out that there are actually some queues which do have a fence in the middle. I don't know if this is completely how it works, but I, I found a couple of examples for it, so I figured it would be realistic to have a fence in the middle, which would still have openings here and there. Um, but using that, I could have a one-tile wide queue, but also you know, actually make it realistic because I felt like a one tile wide queue is just too wide, it'll leave chaos in lines realistically, but I didn't want a half tile wide queue because in game half a tile wide is just really too narrow, you can barely fit any people in that. So the option that I opted for was to get a one tile wide queue in with a fence in the middle but also with openings in between it and a couple of litter bins actually. Because I, yeah, I did find that a couple of rides in real life did that. I don't know exactly how realistic it is or if there are any better ways to do this. Or if there's anything really wrong with my queue line. But this is basically the way that I am doing it at the moment. I do feel pretty confident about the foliage. Uh, I do have to say that I am kind of breaking in on a rule that I would not like to break too much. Which is the fact that there's going to be many flowers around this queue. But still, I do like the foliage overall, but really, I can never stress this enough, don't start to spam your flowers too much, because people are going to have to maintain all that stuff, and it is really hard to turn your entire park into a flower fest and just have your maintenance people actually care for all the flowers at the same time. But I did want to make this look a tiny bit nicer. Oh god, I said a tiny bit. Okay, in any case, I did want to make this look a bit nicer because I didn't want this to turn into a big old forest, which is something which happens to me a lot of the time, and um, I feel like it is a very common pitfall. And I would like to say that you don't always have to fill every single empty grassy area in your park with foliage. Hell, I would recommend you don't, actually, because um, it is always great to just leave some areas open, you can even have some grassy plains here and there, just make sure that you have some open areas with either low shrubs, some grass, or other things, and not just have your entire park be a one big forest. Even the Efteling, which is known for being one big forest, has its empty spaces and its more sunny places. Wow, that sounded a tiny bit poetic, and oh my god. Okay, and in any case, that is pretty much why I also decided to make this area a tiny bit 
Oh my god. I'm not even doing that on purpose. Uh, I, that's why I decided to make this area a bit more open. I really have to move away from saying that, but I also have to move away from talking about it. So, yeah, that's why I decided to just get a bit of flowers in here. It was really hard to find anything else that I could fill this area with without making it too wide and without turning it into a forest, so that's why I decided to go for very small flowers, some grass here and there, and some simple shrubs. And that's basically how I wanted to do the foliage over here. The rest is just gonna be the very standard tree line method that I've always pretty much used, and um, that's always pretty much happening. On the topic of foliage, by the way, I feel like, at least this is how I see it, you have to really find a balance between very dense foliage and very light foliage and not having as much many um, huge trees and getting some small flowers and grass in instead because there are basically two sides that you can go towards when you go for very dense foliage. It either may look very crammed and end up very small and claustrophobic or it can really help towards making your park look very cozy and traditional and I always find it hard to actually get that cozy look with very dense foliage that is really all around your parts in a very compact way while preventing it from looking very obstructive and very tight together and like it's it's very claustrophobic and that's why I figured I would get it a little bit more open over here and try to get a more cozy warm inviting look without having very dense foliage. I The thing about this is that I don't really have any way or figuring out whether I want very dense foliage, foliage that's very close to my parts and that you really can't see through, or whether I want to make it a bit more open to prevent it from being very claustrophobic, but it is just, I feel like it really has to do with the width of your parts as well. If, you've, if you have very wide parts, very large open spaces in general, I always tend to go for foliage that's really close to my parts, really close to my scenery, to make sure that my open spaces don't become too large, and you don't get that really large open space feeling, which I would like to avoid. While at the same time, if I have very narrow paths, I always tend to have my foliage a bit further away from that path. That's at least how I usually do it. And that's my entire view on that. I don't know for sure if that's really how you should do it, but that's basically the rule that I like to follow when I decide whether I want to make my foliage very dense and close to my path or very light and further away from my path. And since this is obviously a very small queue, and the paths that are around the coaster are also quite small, I wanted to make this a bit more open. Another thing is that I find generally, especially in roller coasters, it just looks more fun if you have a more open area, because you can fit small scenery items in it, you can fit interesting flowers in it, and it's just more fun to make, but also look at, so that's why I wanted to do that. Here's also the thing about these litter bins. I have no idea if that's actually a realistic thing. I've never even seen that before on any roller coaster, and I've never done it before. It just so happened to be that when I was looking up things, and I actually found some coasters that had litter bins in their queues, I figured, yeah, that's actually a pretty good point. I don't even know how I've never even had that. I mean, it seems pretty logical that you would have litter bins to prevent your queues from being, well, litter bins themselves, but... I don't even know if that's too much of a realistic thing, and honestly, here is something which the only thing which I feel kind of guilty about is the fact that I don't have a lot of theme park knowledge, and I don't know if everybody knows this at this point, but I've barely gone to any theme parks in my life. I haven't been to one in a couple of years right now, and this is really where I feel bad about the fact that I don't have too much theme park knowledge, because even though... I'm very much interested in this game, I really like making buildings, designing landscapes, I don't really know too much about theme parks and that's really my big issue. So that's why I might actually have to get some more feedback on that in the future and really improve and look look up more things about that, definitely. That's, at least for me, a very large room for improvement because I just don't know too much about theme parks. That's one big issue, which is why I am really insecure and which is why I am probably also making a lot of trouble with my transfer tracks and queues and very theme park specific things like that. So yeah, that's a bit of an explanation of why I am not too good at roller coasters, while I may be good 
at doing other things and why I look to other people for help about that. You'll notice that there's a bit of me just scrolling over the park and looking at things and suddenly building a bit of random foliage which is simply because I didn't really know of things that I would do and this is also one of the reasons why usually most of my videos are 10 minutes long and why I usually stream for about two hours it's I can get a very clear goal of what I want to do exactly and after that I feel like it becomes a bit too random I don't want my time lapses to just be me looking around and looking at small things that I can do here and there. It's obviously something that I need to do every now and then just to improve things, but it's something that I would not like to do on a episodely basis, if that's a word. So that, that's a bit annoying. Next thing that I did do was the Ferris wheel, but that's honestly not too much interesting stuff. That's, that's obviously inspired by the London Ferris wheel, the London Eye, of course. Um, but there's also a different one, I think, in England. Maybe even some other ones. In any case, there are some white Ferris wheels in England. They appear to be quite a trend. And that's why I figured I would get a Ferris wheel on here. Obviously, it is not quite as large as I feel like a really large Ferris wheel over here would completely break the function of the clock tower at the moment of being the major weenie of this area. So... If you have a weenie in your area, make sure that it's actually the largest thing in your area and don't build anything larger than that. Which is why I wanted to stay away from a very large ferris wheel. Another reason is because I still think I need a weenie at the end of my main street and I don't have anything at the moment. And I do think that the large ferris wheel at the end of the main street of Verona Valley works really well to make the main street look a lot better. So I think, at least that's the current idea, that I might get a ferris wheel at the end of the main streets in this park. At least that's the only thing that I can really come up with at this point in time. I've considered drop towers and perhaps a observation tower, stuff like that. Maybe some sort of monument. But I want it to be something that is not any nation specific. So I can get a Eiffel Tower in, that's all fun and stuff. But, you know, it's a very friends thing. And I don't want to have that since this is supposed to be a park that's about Eurasia in general. And you can't... You can't really show the essence of Eurasia in one building, so I would rather not even try to do that. There's also the thing, there's a couple of ideas that I also have. One other idea is to have a castle, which is also a bit of a problem because you can't make a castle that has everything of Eurasia in it. And I have considered actually trying that, to do a castle which has elements from every single Eurasian sort of culture in general in it, but that just feels impossible. I don't think I could even do that well and actually make it work. So at the moment, I think I will have a ferris wheel over there eventually, but I'm not too sure yet. Only thing why I'm really talking about that is because this right here, this little ferris wheel, is not working out too well. And this is actually what I would like to say with my entire story about half wide, I mean half tile wide cues in Rollercoaster Can 3 because this queue is half a tile wide and I really feel as if half a tile is just way too narrow. It's doable for queues that just zigzag in one small building or something like that, but for queues that go through an environment with trees and scenery around it, I don't think half a tile is wide enough. And then again, the dilemma is that I feel like a full tile is too wide. But then again, it's roller coaster in three and three quarter tiles is something that you can barely even work with. They exist, but it's just, it's really a big problem and it's not fun at all. So I think this is how I'll keep the Ferris wheel right now. But once again, I'm very, very uncertain about the way that this Ferris wheel is working out so far. So I might change that in the future. I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to get a Ferris wheel over here and it looks good. Now I just need to make sure that the things around the Ferris wheel look good as well. And that's a bit of my weak point. When it comes to theme park realism, I'm really not too good. In any case, <laughs> I'll try to fix that and figure out what I should do with that. Also, what I'll try to do is next episode, I should remember to actually do an overview of the park. Hopefully, I won't forget it. But at the end of the episode, I should be doing a small overview of what I currently have because it's been requested. And that's going to be it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.